might take a little moment to soak in some inspiration here before we get to work. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Crawford. This is Virginia's Fuller Riders. I don't know if you've been here before, but we're working on a Mazda. And we've been working on this Mazda for what feels like forever. But last week, we crossed a huge milestone of getting it out of the garage, driving down the street under its own power, lifting up under its own air, and it stops. It's pretty amazing. It's awesome. This week's no different, except for the fact that it is really late on Sunday, and I only have a few hours to try to get some progress in, so that's what we're going to do. If you were here last week, you saw me drive it down to the local dollar store for my f first official victory lap of testing how everything functions, and so far, it functions pretty well. It's awesome. It likes to be low. The truck was built before it was body dropped. So the suspension setup, because it has drop spindles in the front, it sits pretty low at ride height. Because max, this thing maxed out isn't very high because it wasn't set up for that. But it's cool because I don't drive everything high. I pretty much float everywhere I go. And my friends can attest to that because they quit in the beginning of me building vehicles like this. It was, uh, there was quite a few questions of, are you sure you're not going to raise that up? We just, we just let it happen. Whatever happens to the body happens to the body. We'll make it look beautiful in the beginning and we'll fix it later. It doesn't really matter. But last week we took it to the store and we actually could stand back and look at this thing and not inside of my tiny garage. And I could, I mean, you could clearly see it now that I have a little bit more room, but there is a massive gap between the bed and the body. And I believe that the bed is tilting down a little bit. So we need to address that today. Like I said, we don't have that much time. So we're going to try and squeeze in some, some smaller things and try to make some progress. I try to push it all the time without sounding like an inspirational quote channel without preaching it, I guess. But you got to do a little bit here and there. Don't try and tackle this whole thing at the one time and get overwhelmed and not want to work on it ever. It's that that 20 minutes every so often makes a huge difference. I know it sounds preachy and kind of corny, but I have a lot of projects and getting overwhelmed is very easy, especially whenever you have a house built in the 50s and it falls apart and you got to fix it in between the projects and like do normal life stuff. Pretty sure a lot of y'all can understand exactly what I'm saying, but regardless, we're getting way off track. This week has been terribly hot. I have been out in the garage rearranging everything. If you've been here for a while, you'll understand because you have seen this tiny garage layout numerous times, and I have completely moved everything, and of course I'm not done doing it because I can't stay on track, and I end up outside running the skid steer for 45 minutes until I remember that I was supposed to be going through the bin of things to get it out of the floor. Again, terrible ADD. It's very hard to stay on track, but that's what we're doing. We got a couple hours and I keep rambling. We need to fix the bed. We need to address shim maneuver to where it fits the truck better and the body lines actually line up. One thing I do want to tackle today Last week, we welded the V-band on the end of the tailpipe there. That way, we can continue the exhaust. I kind of have an idea of where I want it to come out, something in this range-ish. I think from the factory, it's probably more like a, a 90. I've never owned one of these with factory exhaust on it, so I really have no idea. I'll try and look at some pictures online, but I'm kind of thinking something along the lines of this. In order for that to fit correctly, this needs to fit correctly. Oh, before I get completely carried away and we don't get anything done, please go check out all the old videos if you've never been here before. Please subscribe at the 3000 mark. We are doing a giveaway and we are super close. We're like 80 subs away from that 3000 mark. We're giving away some Virginia's Full Rider t-shirts, tumblers, and stickers. We're going to do multiple places and multiple sets of things are going to go out to y'all as my showing for appreciation. I've had a lot of guys recently say that they've been to my channel for the first time and they went back to the very beginning and binge watched everything. So to help with that, I made a playlist 
that goes from the beginning to where we are now, and I'm gonna to continue to add them as I go. That way you can click and binge, because I have a lot of dudes, like probably 30 people in the last month or so message me and say, hey, I started watching and I just finished, and it took me like a week to get through all of them, and it was awesome, and they appreciate it, and I appreciate y'all. So again, 3,000 mark. I'm gonna make a separate video explaining all that. I just haven't had time to do it yet. And I'm going to stop rambling because we need to get to work because I'm running out of time. And hopefully y'all don't see this at midnight tonight. So I got this idea. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I feel like I say that a lot. This is just string line. You would buy this to do laying out a fence or laying out a property line or laying out a whatever you need to do in long lengths but you don't have to buy them in this long of a length. So my idea here, since it is too bright in here, even with the lights off, the camera doesn't pick up my laser level. So it's kind of hard to explain what I'm doing here. This is, this would be the crude version of the laser level. Kind of thinking if I string this out here and I tie it to something, or if I just yank it right off the tape that I put on there immediately, try that. So, string it out, string it out to the back. Yeah, according to that, the bit is way off, like really, really off. Most definitely say, not saying that you need to use a rigid pipe stand, but it's just what I have laying around that's the right height. Yeah, the back of the bit's got to go way up according to this. Do one of those. Of course this bed's going to come off here 20 times before we're done, but this will at least get us close. That way we can just put the same shim back in it every time. So we're good all the way to about there. I'm going to say we're going to need at least a quarter inch of spacer in the rear to make this work. And I'm predicting quarter inch spacer up there is going to drastically affect the gap that we have here. We also need to go forward at the same time. So I wanna put a tailpipe on this thing, mainly because I really don't like when my vehicle's drone going down the highway. I don't know about y'all, but at least for me, when I sit down, even if I'm driving, if I'm sitting down for more than 20 minutes, I am getting tired. I can have them all of the energy in the world. You sit me on the couch, sit me in a car, if I'm not holding the steering wheel and I'm shifting gears and I'm doing something or blasting music or something, I'm probably gonna fall asleep. The droning adds to that a lot. So we're trying to eliminate that today. don't have the bed supports made for the front half of the bed and as you can see it's still floppy so it messes with that gap because it 
kind of messes with your eye a little bit. I don't know. On camera, it doesn't. You can't even see what I'm talking about, but in person, it definitely does. The bed is as far forward as it can go. I think the the main difference is the style of bolt that, which I don't know if I have one, which I would never be able to find it in here. The bolt that comes from a factory has slightly less of a shoulder on it. I had one this morning. I, I have no idea what happened to it, but that would allow for a little bit movement more forward. So I think I'm gonna do, I'm getting as good as I can the way it is. But since I'm using an aftermarket bolt and the shoulder is really large and it's not neck down at all, I can't push past the shoulder of the bolt, if that makes sense. So what I think what I'll have to do is make the holes slightly larger or oval them just a hair to move the bed forward, probably another eighth of an inch or so. It's not that much. It just, it looks a little off. I even Googled pictures of brand new Mazdas from like ads back in the day and the body line and the bed gap looks pretty much the same as what I got here but you can see here our pink line is straight across now and all I did was jack the rear up well I ended up taking them all loose I put like I said quarter inch of shims in the rear one shim in the center, and then no shim in the front. So this side needs a little bit more adjustment. This bed came off of a wood truck, and it is not in the best of shape. So we're working around some imperfections. If you go way, way back to whenever I raised this bed floor, these things were all crushed in. I still have to body work that one some more, but the bed, Overall, rust-wise, it's in great shape. Overall, dent and twist, not so much. A little bit of rust here, a little spot that I cut out there. But there's, I don't think the camera picks it up, but there's scrapes and dings all over this thing. But that stuff doesn't matter now. It's drivable. What we need to do now, now that we have the correct height back here, to make that tailpipe. So I got a couple of these cutoff pieces that have very, very slight angles on them. Like this used to be a, a 90, and now there's just a, I don't know, a 30 degree angle on it or whatever it may be. So I have a big U that I could chop up trying to avoid using it if I can I'm trying to use some up trying to use up some of these pieces that I already have that one's that one's pretty close I'm hoping this maybe maybe attached to that I could get it down to the ground, or vice versa. I don't know. I'll have to play with this a little bit, see what we can get out of it. I have a whole bunch of random little pieces like this that I could potentially make work. Well, I didn't have quite the angle that I wanted so I ended up having to sacrifice that U, but it's not a big deal because that's why I bought the stuff anyway. I have the other end of the V-band. I'm just going to do a fusion weld here. I don't think this is going to require any filler or anything. Hopefully not because I'm feeling kind of lazy. TIG switch and pulse, the machine pretty much does 
all of the work for you. I don't know if the GoPro is actually focusing on this because it sucks at focusing, but that thing is hot. So I Googled more pictures of these trucks from the factory to get an idea of what a factory tailpipe looked like. And it didn't really seem like there was a definitive answer to that. Because if you look at the pictures and I'll add some to the screen, they're all over the place. They just somewhere out of the back. It didn't matter what angle or like the angles are weird. Almost, some of the pictures almost looks like they're pointing that way. So they're like, like this. So they're straight down. Some are like this. Some are almost look like they're like this. But this is where we're at. This is where we're at with just that tip on there. Just resting on the ground right now. It looks kind of goofy that way. So I'm going to add another piece to kick it out from underneath of the truck. And in doing that, I'm gonna try to make it not so boring. Went through all this work to do stainless exhaust. I kind of want to be able to see some of it. So I'm gonna mark that, cut it, and then weld this guy on there. And I'm gonna try and do something, something a little bit beyond just winging it like Mazda did. After cutting this, I think like six times, I finally found an angle that I'm okay with. I'm actually happy with the way this turned out. It's a uh, not as simple, it's extremely simple, but it's not, I don't know. There's something different about it, the way that it comes out rather than just poking at the ground. Of course, I need to replace that bed corner, but. Polished it up a little bit. It's subtle, but still cooler looking than factory. Let's see what it sounds like. Makes sense why there's so much rattling going on in the side of the truck. I don't know if the camera picks that up, but the bedside being loose causes so many vibrations. Not bad. It didn't change the sound a bunch, which is always a good thing. This truck creates so much moisture. You can probably fill up a cup of water in a couple minutes here. I rotated it a little bit. That's how I intended it to be. It was super tight to the body. I like it. I got maybe like an hour left of time that I can work, so. See what else we can get into. So I know the 
idea that I came up with is kind of split on the decisions with the small roll bar and the small pull bar on the front. Some people messaged me and said they loved the idea. And then some people commented and said they didn't really care for it. Like I've been saying, I've said it over and over, if it doesn't look good, I'll just take it back out. Not a big deal. My buddy Andy, he's a race car guy. He was like, or he's had, I don't know, how many tube chassis cars. One of them, he was building from scratch. The main hoop they sent him was too short. And then the other one that he had, the angles were wrong. He tried to put them in the bender that he had, and it made some weird dimples in it. So I was gifted some hoops. This is the one of the main reasons that I'm willing to do this, because I don't have to take brand new material and bend it and potentially waste it. I already have wasted material. I have a hoop that is too short for any car, and I have a hoop that has some weird, not kinks, but a little bit dimples, and it's not functional, so it really doesn't matter. And a little bit of a dimple that's in the pipe doesn't bother me at all, so... Just looking at them, I don't think that this is anywhere close to the shape of the roof, but I think that this one is. So I think we're gonna go with this guy. We're gonna take some measurements and cut this down. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sneak up on it. That way we can get the height right. I want it to basically be at the same height as the roof. Initially, I was going to do a little bit higher and put lights up here, but I think I talked myself out of the lights. That was really weird. My stabilization part of my camera stopped working, and it's been 20 minutes, and now it works again. I have no idea. So my entire idea behind this is this guy I know. I wouldn't really call him a friend. This dude that I used to hang out with had a Subaru Brat. I don't know if you all have ever seen a Subaru Brat. Or maybe you've seen a Plymouth Scamp or the Dodge had there. I don't know. There was a bunch of them that looked very similar. The Brat was a pickup truck. It was a Subaru pickup truck, but it had these hard plastic seats in the bed. But it had these little roll bars you can get them with. And they had these weird goofy ones that came up really high. But I always thought that it was cool that it like built into the body was this roll bar and like I've said since the beginning I'm trying to keep the four-wheel drive look so I think a, a very small tasteful 80s homage if you could roll bar would look good in here but again if it doesn't work I'll use the tubing for something else I'm not sold on it yet it fits in there pretty good. I gotta figure out a way. I know this is counterintuitive and it's really not good for the pipe. Again, it's not structural, so it really doesn't matter. It's just for looks. To take some of the bend back out of it. I think that's actually what he was trying to do, and that's why those weird kinks are in there. Because if it matched the pillars a little bit more. I think it would look really good. I, it looks good to me now. It would just be nice if I could get a little bit more angle on this. I was thinking, if I have that, they're already bent. I might be able to use those as the, whatever you want to call this part, the leg. to be something like this but longer of course I don't know. so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take a guesstimation on what angle I want and get it close and then dig out the tubing notcher probably next weekend like I said and actually notch it to fit but what we can get the general satisfaction of making the starting to make something today. That's what we're going for. General satisfaction. Well, I went outside, wedged it in the frame of one of these junk trucks I have laying around and yanked on it like a gorilla. And I got it to straighten out a little bit. 
doesn't quite meet the curve, but I think it's a, a good in between. And I got looking at this. I don't want to go too far out. I like to be able to still use my little factory tie down since I went through the point of making them stay on the bed. I think that'd be pretty cool. It'll be painted black, of course. But I think I'm gonna cut up that other one. We'll see if we can ruin some steel, come up with a general idea. I don't think I'm gonna weld it together today. I don't have enough time, but it'll be, uh, be a good project for next weekend. Get it all welded up, make mounts for it, paint it, install it. Yeah. Let's do that real quick. See if we can waste however much these things cost. That looks like a good angle, right? So we got the professional fully welded here. I was really hoping that that would be long enough to cross in between the two, but it's not, which kind of sucks. But I'm kind of digging it. I don't know if I like the angle that I have right now, but eighties, eighties, nineties. That's what I'm going for. I've been trying to go for the whole time. I know the wheels don't count right now, but. Hopefully, we'll eventually have some baby billets to be on there to complete the look. Just picture this whole thing, this exact same color, with brand new graphics that look identical to what there's on there now. Minus the SE5 thing, I'll probably change that to something different. With baby billets. A little roll bar little tiny cow pusher bar thing bull bar again not sold on the placement of the uprights so not even sold on the whole thing i'm gonna fully make it and if i don't like it it might end up in another truck that i end up getting or something i don't know to think about it this week. I know it was a short one, but again, I've been trying to make the garage usable or better, more efficient, so I don't have to constantly look for things. I have some more of these coming, these racks, so I can have all my vice grips in one place. I have a whole bunch of them in there, of normal ones. I have I've been trying to get this system down to where whenever I do get into a larger garage, all of these things can be made into a rack. It'll cover a wall or it'll be movable, whatever. Everything has a home. Everything is labeled. I'm trying to get that way with everything that I have. It might be that I just back a sea container up to the garage and poke a hole through the garage. And all of these things will end up in that sea container. The garage would probably be plenty big enough if there was nothing inside of it. That's the huge, that's the biggest thing. The garage is a good size garage if you didn't own tools. It's like 26 by 19 inside or 25 by 19 inside. The plan soon, hopefully, if I can come up with another low profile door that double hinges and all that, I like to cut a hole in that wall so I can just pull straight in and not have to deal with these things and it would make it so much easier to use the space but I'm rambling I'll see y'all next weekend there will be a video up I'm definitely gonna get the video up this week with the explanation of all of the giveaway things and that's about it so I appreciate y'all stopping by hopefully you stop by next weekend there is a new video every single Sunday. I've only missed one out of an entire year of Sundays. 
I messed up on one Sunday because I didn't have any parts lined up. So hopefully that doesn't happen and we can keep the ball rolling. We're getting pretty close to having this thing to where it's gonna kind of taper off and we're gonna get on the van. If you haven't been here before and seen the van, the van will be body dropped. It'll be independent rear suspension. It'll be pretty wild all around. So there's tons of projects to come and I appreciate y'all watching. I will see you next Sunday.